Hey there, welcome back. I'm so glad you can make it because today we're going to take an adventure to outer space. So no matter who you are, if you've been watching these videos from a distance, mom, dad, hey, this is your day to shine. Come on in. All you need to know how to do is scribble because today we're going to draw a nebula using only crayons. Now, for those that don't know what a nebula is, it's basically just a bunch of gas out in space that makes a beautiful sort of cloud that we register in nice bright colors. Now, nebulas are formed when either a star is born or a star is dying. Sometimes we call them baby nurseries, right? Just little baby stars being born. Think of that. So, what we have for our supplies today are the same as usual, crayons and paper, except I've added some things to scratch with. Because later, for the stars and little effects, we're gonna scratch our crayon. So I have a coin and I have scissors. Lastly, I have a wet piece of uh, paper towel. And we'll use this in the end just to kind of soften some edges. All right, so that being said, let's talk about our colors we're using. So nebulas can be in any color. Sometimes I see them reds, purples, pinks, yellows, oranges, multicolor, which is like the one we're gonna make today, multicolor. So what I did was I chose two colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So see how going around that wheel over and over again, just like a rainbow, colors go in an order. Now, you're safe to pick any two colors that are touching each other. We call those analogous colors. We know those are gonna blend nicely into each other. So the two I chose are green and blue. Awesome. I have a light green and a darker green. Likewise with the blue, a light blue and a darker blue. Lastly, we have our black. So before we get going, you'll notice I put some tape on the edges of my page today. That's just so that when I use the black and really make some uh, good coverage, that I can have a nice clean matted uh, edge. So you can go ahead and do that or you don't have to. It's just mostly for my presentation's sake. So without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, let's leave orbit. So what I first start by doing is grabbing my lightest crayon. I'm gonna start with the green myself and the lightest green. It's almost like a yellow green that I have. The thing to understand is that there's no way to mess this up. It's all about how we blend our colors. And so what I do is I start by finding a path that the nebula can be drawn onto. And so first, I like to do like S shapes, curves. So I'm just gonna kind of come through, do something like that. And then I'll do a couple little marks kind of shooting off here and there. Remember, yours does not need to look just like this. This is just so that I can start to kind of think and get scribbling a little bit. Perfect. So here's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna go from green to blue. So in this corner green, this corner blue. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the crayon I'm using and just give a nice uh, amount of pressure, really, really coloring in this whole area, moving in towards the other side. Now. As I'm coloring it, notice that I'm going kind of side to side. I'm using the edge of the crayon so that I get some really good coverage. I'm gonna go past the halfway point, even though this end will eventually be blue. It's all about blending colors right here on the spot. And so what you see me doing is following these guidelines, but then just making thicker sort of shapes that are inspired by them. And keep in mind, it could be a million different ways and we'll be able to edit this in the end so that you can sort of uh, finesse it more so. So that's enough color there. Uh, you can always saturate it more if you feel like you need it. What I'm gonna do now is set that down and I'm gonna pick up my light blue. What I'll do is I'll pick up on the ends of my nebula over here. I sometimes think of these as tendrils, these little bits, these arms of cloud dust that come off. And then I'm gonna kind of fill it, and as I hit the yellow, I'm just gonna go ahead and let it blend. The whole exciting part about this is whatever two colors you choose to use, we just wanna have fun and see how they mesh and blend and how we get awesome results, and look how I really let 
the coloring become more organic. The looser you get with this, like I suggest doing this exercise the next time with a TV show on in the background and not thinking too hard about it. Here I go. I'm going over into the yellow, but I'm going to start softening, softening, softening. Because what I'll do is I'll come in with my green and really, really power it up. So as I get to about the end, I've just um, really loosened my touch. Over here, I'm going to do just a little bit of blue, but leave some of the yellow. And remember, it's really about how much of what color you want. It's not so much about the technique I'm using. And um, coloring harder will always uh, get you a more saturated or brighter color. So here we go. And a little bit there. Perfect, perfect. Just looks like a big scribble. The idea is just to have fun with this and make an interesting shape that then will refine as we go. So I'm gonna now go to my darker green. I'm gonna start at the edges of the nebula and work towards the center of the yellow, ideally pressing harder at the edges and finding just little areas here and there where I can have the lighter yellow come through. We want these two colors to blend, so press nice and firm. We want it to be a sort of bright green and yellow. And you'll notice that I extend the edges when I do this, even though I might afterwards have some of this extended edge be the blackness of outer space, I still will give myself a little bit of overflow just so it feels that um, the light that's emanating from this, that massive energy of the star either being born or dying is um, really radiating out into the sky. There go our scissors, Geronimo. I'll pick them up in a second, don't worry about that. All right, so I'm gonna come down here give this a little bit of that green and you can connect things too. really have fun with it I really can't stress enough that this should be an absolutely meditative sort of exercise okay that's enough green for myself I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my deeper blue and I'm gonna pick up my scissors so let's set those scissors back perfect so with the deeper blue just like the green I'll start at the edges and work my way towards the center. I guess we're just gonna have to grab those scissors when they're ready, huh? So, all right, let's keep going to the edge, going, and notice how I'm going wider than the shape I've done, but I'm also then going into the shape. Now, I can go into this green area, look at the cool colors it makes. The whole idea is to have fun with the color blends. Don't worry too much about how much of what to do where or which way. More so, if there's one thing I'm worrying about, it's really just kind of how hard I'm pushing in my crayon. So in areas where I want the blue to be darker, I press harder. In areas where I want to go over but just have a softness, I'll press softer. Here, I'm just going to kind of hit the edge of clouds, just for fun there. And I'm calling it a cloud now because, you know, hey, they have that kind of cloudy shape. It's a, it's a space cloud. You know, nebulas, they're like space clouds now. How are we all doing at home, by the way? You know, I'm so excited to be doing this lesson with you because one of the first things that I ever personally started uh, painting when I first started painting was nebulas. And I was so excited to find that when I was working out today's lesson that, hey, I can get a really cool nebula effect with crayons. You know, this is really a fun experience for both of us because um, really, I, um, you know, never really worked with crayons since I was a little kid, and it's been so fun for me to kind of, um, you know, take all those uh, misconceptions I have that, oh, crayons are for little kids, you can't do serious things with them, and really kind of amaze myself on a daily basis with them. So now, look at how we have all this brightness, uh, the blue fading to the greens and everything. What we're going to do now is we're gonna go ahead and take our black. Now with the black, we're gonna go all the way to the edges and you can cut a little bit in with sort of like the same type of shapes we have coming out of our nebula, but cutting into it and in different shapes and sizes, just like they are here. You'll see as we go. Okay, now I'm gonna use real firm pressure because, hey, we want this to be in a frame afterwards. This is not something that's 
down for the fridge. That's what I've been saying in this class. So look how hard I'm coloring. I'm really taking my time with it. And I'm going all the way to the edge and past. That's what's important. There's no white border here. Going all the way to the edge and into it. We want it to feel like the nebula is fading out into space. So I'm gonna keep coloring here. And so that we can do this together and you don't have to press pause and I don't have to keep thinking of things to talk, you know, I've decided I'm gonna entertain you. I'm gonna play us a song that is about being in space. And I think we can relate to it right now too because it's also about a man in space that's lonely, sad, and missing all his friends back home. So let's go ahead and color and we'll give that a listen. Hit it, Kenny. She packed my bags last night Free fly Zero hour, nine a.m. And I'm gonna be high As a cat by then I'll miss the earth so much is my wife Yeah, it's lonely out in space On such a timeless flight Great job. So now if you're still coloring, please go ahead and uh, keep going, press pause and really get a nice solid black. If you have little bits of dots going on, that's okay because they can look like stars. But for the most part, I'm getting rid of them. All right. So how was that tune by the way? Well, geez, thanks. All right. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into the scratching. So let's go over to our nebula with our coin. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in just random areas and try to kind of peck out a little bit of the highlights. Okay, so here we go. Now, push hard into it as you scratch 
And again, I'm kind of just doing it in random areas. I'm hoping that what this does is it reveals some of the colors where I overlapped. And because we did the lighter color first, this is going to make it look as if there's some bright light sort of coming out between some of the uh, clouds. So here I go, just to random little areas. And you could do it over large areas if you want. Really scratching in there. See how I can brighten this whole sort of arm right here, kind of make that feel like it's got a little bit more intensity. You'll notice that scratching will make areas feel brighter. So maybe I want to brighten this up. And remember, yours doesn't have to look just like mine. The idea is, is that we're learning the idea behind creating this so that we could do it time and time again with any colors we want and not have any trouble at all. Check this out. So whenever you feel like you've got enough on there, you can stop scratching. I'm going to do a little bit more, maybe add some bright spots down over here. All right. And then to get the little extra like clumps of crayon that come off, you can sort of just take a like a brush or a cloth and kind of wipe them away. So I got this brush right here. You can just take a cloth and push them. All right. So now that we've got the little highlights everywhere, let's go ahead and do a little bit of last blending. So first, I'm going to grab this blue and kind of just everywhere where the edge of the nebula meets the uh, space, I'm gonna color there real hard. The idea is, is that I want this to be the point where we really make a strong blend into the black. And it does a really nice job um, kind of doing this as a finishing touch. It also makes the edges of the nebula feel a little brighter here and there. So here we go. Just going around. You could also color in your nebula anywhere. If you scratch too much away, this is the time where I would take care of that. All right. And then what I'll do is a last touch and I'm gonna fast forward a little so I can really get into it. Just sort of add the details as you will, um, is I'm gonna take the black and just kind of cut in here and there for some last little sort of transitions at the edge because the whole idea is that you want it to feel soft and like it's fading in different areas so I'll just do interesting little cuts in and really press hard with your crayon if you're having trouble see how all these start making it feel a little bit more um, organic less planned I'm just basically taking the shape that we already made and just kind of cutting into it even more making it more interesting to look at. Now these last two steps are really optional. Just if you wanted to render it a little further, I'm so proud of y'all for sticking in with this lesson because it's really cool what we could do with crayons. I'm taking my wet paper towel and just at the edges softly, I'm gonna kind of do a circular motion. I don't wanna go too hard because I don't wanna pull the crayon off, but what this is doing is it's kind of softening some of the areas where it's uh, sort of going black into the color. And it's allowing for a little bit of a blend to happen. So I'm just kind of going over one pass. You'll notice your napkin will get a little bit dirty, so go ahead and turn it every now and then. I like doing this circular motion. I feel like it helps sort of make it feel more like clouds and everything everywhere. Now, as a last, last touch, if you wanted to, and you have it, you could take a little bit of white paint, and if you don't have what you would think is enough stars, you could just take the white paint, kind of water it down, put it on a brush, and flick some stars on. And look at that. Before you know it, boom. So hopefully you got a little bit of paint at home. If not, it's okay. You could use things like whiteout um, to find those stars. And otherwise, you know, not super necessary. Anyways. 
I can't wait till tomorrow's lesson. I'm so glad you stuck through with this today. Look what we did. This is a masterpiece. Well, until next time, doodle on.